Our part is to simply share and demonstrate the gospel with love and power. We learn simple strategies for personal and group evangelism and the spiritual dimensions of sharing the gospel. All right, we're going to uh, make our declaration and then we'll uh, spend some time in God's word. So why don't we all rise up to our feet, please, and then we'll hold the Bibles high up in the air. And we're going to say uh, this out loud, bold, and strong. Let's say this together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word, and I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to Him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Please shake hands with the people. Turn around. Please shake hands with the people around you. Say hello. Greet them. Give them your name. And uh, then you may be seated, please. Yeah, last week I was uh, away just traveling, uh, spent two days in Nagpur. So we had a pastor's conference there in Nagpur. I had about 230 people uh, attending the conference. We talked about revivals. It was, uh, it was extremely well received. and They've been stirred up and encouraged to pray and uh, uh, press in for revival. Uh, I was in Nagpur city. And uh, then uh, two days in Sholapur. Sholapur is a slightly smaller town. Uh, but again, the, the, they said for the first time, people sat through for two full days to hear the word of God. Uh, usually there, they're like, they're not going to sit down and listen to the word. We, but they did in, in, in Shalapur. All, all the pastors came. Uh, there again, we had two, about 200 some uh, people at the, uh, the conference. Uh, all the city pastors, other than the mainline denominations, uh, all the other independent churches, pastors were there and their church leaders, leaders from the churches attended. Uh, we spent two days talking about kingdom building. Uh, that's like every time we go, first time we go into a city, that's the first conference we do. We talk about kingdom building. And so that was well received. And they were so excited. They said, we have to come back and do a five-day conference. Like they said, we are ready to sit for five days and receive. So that was their response. We just want, you know, five days of this. We want more uh, because... They, they, they don't get such kind of, you know, input into their lives. So that was there in Sholapur. And then uh, uh, the, the last Sunday we were at our church in Kalyan. So Kalyan is a, a suburb of Mumbai, a little outside of Mumbai. We have a church there. And uh, um, it's interesting to see how the church has transitioned. Of course, there they have their own place. We have our own place, uh, a small building that can hold maybe about 120 people. Uh, you know, in the early days when we first saw the church, everybody was sitting on the floor and lots of young people. Now all those young people have grown up and now everybody sits on chairs. <laughs> like, I've seen the change, the transition. And, uh, but they run out of space for children. So about, I think, I, I, I didn't see the children's church, but he, uh, Pastor Anand, he told me about 40 kids, they meet outside separately uh, for children's church. So the hall is, you know, full with people. And now they're all sitting on chairs and and the young people are, you know, uh, becoming more urban kind of thing um, over there. So it's interesting, interesting to see how the transitions that are happening in these outreach churches, how they, uh, they're growing. The, the church actually is in the middle of a slum. So that's where it, was, it started. But people are changing. And, and one thing that really uh, touched me was I saw a family from the town coming into the church. You know, before it was like only the slum people coming to this church. But now, these are like really well-to-do family. They're coming in and, and, and they're worshiping in that same place. And I was like, something is changing. Of course, the people are also growing, but something is happening. And, uh, and so I was really uh, uh, happy to see how that work is evolving there in Kalyan and just minister to them. So the youth also now are active. They're all serving just like here. 
they are taking up responsibility, leading worship, and so on. All the little ones have grown up and uh, doing that. So, uh, uh, it is nice to be there and, and uh, share. All right. Uh, we're going to continue talking about lifestyle evangelism. I know Pastor Brian uh, ministered here last Sunday, and he did a great job uh, in, in sharing with us on, uh, on overcoming inhibitions, which we covered last Sunday. Uh, this is the third message in this series on lifestyle evangelism. And what we're trying to do is basically encourage all of us to make the sharing of the gospel a part of our everyday life, just part of who you are and we are. And I'll just go with the flow. Wherever you are, uh, whatever your vocation is in life right now, that you look for opportunities to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So the first message in this series, we talked about the necessity and the urgency. Why should we do this? And wh what's, what's so urgent about sharing the gospel with people? Second message last Sunday, we talked about overcoming inhibitions. You know, we all have, all of us have things that hold us back, but we need to press past that. We need to push past that, overcome inhibitions, and share Jesus Christ with people, and not be afraid to do that. And uh, this morning, I'm just going to talk a little bit about simple strategies. Simple strategies on how to share Jesus with people. Uh, it's important to have some strategies or uh, some ideas, at least, on how we're going to do this. And so I want to just share some thoughts along that line. So you're ready that, and you're alert. You're looking for these kinds of opportunities to share Jesus with people. But I want to lay some a foundation here, just uh, some uh, important truths that are based on which we step out to share Jesus with people. First of all, keep in mind that the Lord Jesus, he wants us to be witnesses with power. Um, he wants us to be witnesses with power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus said, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. So how are, to be, how are we to be witnesses for Jesus? We are supposed to be witnesses for Jesus with power. With power. He said, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. Right? He didn't say, you know, you're going to have a lot of information, then go be my witness. Or, so our dependence is essentially on the power of the Holy Spirit. The power the Spirit of God has brought into our lives. Our dependence is on that as we are witnesses to Jesus Christ. You will receive power and you will be a witness. So, if I want to make one statement on, on our on our that really captures the strategy. What is our strategy? How are we going to do this? It's simply this. It's to share and demonstrate the gospel. Share and demonstrate. Power is something you do. It's something you demonstrate. Now, somebody says, I have power. We'll say, show us. Do something with it. Demonstrate it. So we share and demonstrate the gospel. With love and power. So that's our strategy. Share and demonstrate. The, the demonstration part is important because it gives evidence. It validates the message. And that's what Jesus intended. I said, I'm giving you power so that you can be a witness. He's, he's telling us, look, I want you to go and be a witness with power. So you share and demonstrate the gospel with love and and power. That's our strategy. So regardless of, you know, whether you're a student in school or a college or you are a businessman, you're a teacher or a professor or a salesperson, whatever you're doing, this is it. You share and demonstrate the gospel with love and power. That's how we're going to do it. Now, I want us to also understand that our dependence, or we must be convinced on the power of the gospel. Paul said this in Romans 1 verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel, the message of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of it. Why? That message itself is the power of God. 
that will bring salvation to anyone who believes. You see, the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ is very simple. What is the gospel? Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried. After three days, he rose up again. He's alive today. If you will believe in him, you will receive salvation. That's the gospel. Very simple. That message, Paul says, is the very power of God that brings salvation. Now, when the Bible talks about salvation, it is everything that God gives through the cross. Forgiveness of sins, healing, deliverance, protection, victory, triumph. Salvation is, is a complete package. It's not just, you know, you have your sins forgiven, now you struggle for the rest of your life. No, salvation is everything God gives through the cross. And the gospel is God's power that brings salvation to every person who believes. So you and I must have this confidence that when I tell somebody this gospel, I'm actually giving them an opportunity to encounter the power of God so that they can experience salvation in their lives. Are you with me? The gospel is the power of God. That message itself is a power of God. And so don't feel ashamed. Don't apologize for the gospel. Don't try to, you know, I need to add some masala to the gospel to make it appealing. Relax. This simple message, the gospel of Christ, is the power of God. You be confident that when you share the gospel, the simple message of Jesus, your people are going to encounter the power of God. They're going to experience the power of God. All they need to do is believe it. If they will believe it, they are actually going to experience the power of God in their lives. So you and I must have confidence. I think for many of us, our biggest problem is this. You know, I want to give a message that is really appealing to the minds. I mean, especially if you're living, uh, especially if you're talking to intellectuals or people in the city. People out in the villages, okay, very simple. You need to keep everything very basic. And they will say yes to everything you said. <laughs> but in the cities, it's not like that. People reason, they argue, they question. And so you and I are, are under a lot of pressure to say things that appeal to the mind. We want to sound very, you know, uh, that, that we, have, we have something very profound, something very complex. But the gospel is so utterly simple. That sometimes we want to apologize for it. Hey, I'm sorry, I don't have something more complex to say. It's a simple message. Jesus Christ died for your sins. If you believe and he rose up again, you believe your sins will be forgiven. You know, very simple. Now, the apostle Paul was faced with a similar thing. And then we'll go to 1, Peter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It's a passage that I like very much, 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 to 25. I'll read this passage for us, and then let's try to understand what the Apostle Paul is saying here about the message of the cross, which is the gospel. He says, for the message of the cross, verse 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks' foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So, Paul is faced with two kinds of people in his audience. There are the Jews, the Jewish people, who are very spiritual. They want a sign. They want something supernatural. Show us something. Do something. They want a sign. And then you have the Greeks who are intellectuals. 
They want wisdom. Talk to us about something that appeals to our minds. And Paul is saying, look, you know, man by his wisdom cannot know God. Meaning God is so big, God is not going to fit in to the petty arguments of man, the disputer of this world, the, the scribe, the people who want to think they've got everything down through their intellect. God's not going to fit into it. God instead has chosen the foolishness of preaching the message of the cross to save people. So this method seems very silly, seems foolish. That is that you preach, you talk about Jesus, you talk about the cross, and he's going to save people. So God has chosen this method. He's chosen this approach. And so he says, you know, the Jews look for a son, the Greeks seek for wisdom, but what do we do? Verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified. That's what we preach. That's what, whether it's the Jews or whether it's the Greeks, we have the same message. Are you with me? You don't have to change your message. One message. Whether you're a very spiritual person looking for something supernatural, or whether you're an intellectual looking for a lot of wisdom, we just have only one message. We preach Christ crucified. All those who are awake say amen. Oh, thank you. That's, that's a trick question. All right. So, there's only one message. It's Christ crucified. We preach Christ cru crucified. We preach the message of the cross. But look what Paul says. He says, the message of the cross. It is the power of God and it is the wisdom of God for everyone who will believe it. That means in this message, people actually experience God's power. It, it satisfies the the Jews, the people are looking for signs, we're looking for something supernatural. It also satisfies the Greeks, the, the intellectuals, those who are seeking for wisdom. This message is the power of God. It is the wisdom of God. It will take care of what they're, everything they're looking for. All they need to do is to believe that. Amen? So, I want to encourage you and me. You see... Doesn't matter what kind of audience you have, whether you're having you have somebody who's very spiritual who wants to, you know, show me something very powerful, or whether you're you're talking to somebody who's an intellectual who who says, you know, you know, give me something very uh, appealing to my mind. Look, I have you and I just share do one thing. We share the message of the cross. That's it. And that message of the cross is the wisdom of God. It's the power of God. It will impact their lives. You leave that to God. We preach Christ crucified. Now some people may think about it as foolishness. Paul says this message of the cross. To so some people it's foolishness. To others it's a stumbling block. To the Jews it is a stumbling block. It looks like weakness. But Paul says the weakness of God is stronger than man. So even the cross that looks like weakness. That's actually a demonstration of God's great power. Because they don't know that on that same cross, the devil was totally defeated. And it's that same cross that will set them free from everything and anything that the world cannot set them free from. So the weakness of God, the cross that seems like a very weak thing, the weakness of God is stronger than anything that man has. Amen? So... Some people may call it foolishness. Some people may stumble at it. It's a stumbling block. They think, what is this? But listen, you and I make no apologies for the cross of Jesus Christ. Because it is the wisdom of God and the power of God. They just need to come to an understanding of it and they'll experience it. Amen? So, don't apologize. Don't hesitate. You talk about the message, a simple message of the gospel. Say, keep it plain, keep it simple. They need to understand it. And if they understand it, they will encounter the power of God and the wisdom of God. You know, Paul himself was a great intellectual. He was a Pharisee. That means he had spent about 33 years of his life studying all the ancient Hebrew scriptures. He studied like a PhD or maybe a double PhD of an RNA. Really educated man, a Pharisee. And yet when he was called by God and he encountered Jesus and when he went out to preach the gospel, here's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. He said, my speech 
and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So he says, look, now this is Paul who's an intellectual. He's studied, he's, he's, he's got all his degrees behind him. But he says, you know, when I come to talk about Jesus, it's I'm not depending on persuasive words of human wisdom, but I'm depending on the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I don't want people's faith to, depend, to be reliant or to be dependent on human wisdom. That will shake, that will fall. But I want their faith to be in the power of that's the same approach we take. And yes, I'm not saying, you know, because Paul continues, says, but we speak wisdom among those who understand spiritual things. Right? So those are open. Of course, we will explain uh, uh, deep things later on to help them understand the, you know, the mysteries of God. But when we preach the gospel, our dependence is on the power of the Holy Spirit. We keep it simple. Let's tell them about Jesus. So why did I say all that? To help you and I come to a place of confidence in the simple message of the gospel. Be confident about it. That this message of the cross that you share with people, as simple as it is, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for your sins on the cross. He was buried the third day. He rose again. He's alive today. If you will believe in him, you will be saved. You'll experience everything he's come to give you. That simple message is the wisdom of God. It's the power of God. And we just say it like it is and depend on the Holy Spirit to impact their lives. Have confidence in the gospel. Amen? The gospel is the power of God. So, now let's talk about a few strategies. Here. And, you know, each of us will need some personal strategies on how to share and demonstrate the gospel in your world of influence. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I can't give... Uh, you know, something that says, oh, you know, just this will apply everywhere. We're just going to talk about some general ideas. But depending on where you are, maybe you're in, you work in a college. Maybe you're, you teach in a school. Maybe you're a salesman who travels, you know, five days of the week. Or, 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 or you're, you're just moving around around the city or you travel across the globe. Or, or you know, each one of us are in a different vocation in life. And uh, depending on what you're doing, you need to have a few strategies in your mind on how you're going to bring the gospel to people. You need to be ready, prepared. So I'm just going to throw out some general ideas uh, for you and me. Regardless of what our vocation is, uh, we can use some of these general things. But the specifics, you see how God will give you ideas. And remember this, that we are depending on the Holy Spirit. So this is where the gifts of the Spirit come in. Right? Of you and I depending on the Holy Spirit. That, that God will flow through me. That the works of the Spirit will take place through me. But I'm going to step out in faith any opportunity I get. And it should be normal. It should be natural. Okay? No striving. It just flows. Look for any opportunity. Like in Nagpur, um, as they took me to the hotel. Okay, so I was going to the hotel. And the person was carrying my bag. I usually try to carry my bag alone. But this guy, this waiter didn't let him carry my bag. So he took me into the room, put me there. But then I realized he was deaf and dumb. The guy was bringing it. My immediate reaction is, it's like, I, I, I want to say, can I pray for you? Like, now, he can't hear me. I can't speak to him. But through sign language, I said, you wait. I Hopefully, he understood what I was trying to say. <laughs> I said, I want to pray for you. And, you know, and I reached out and prayed for him. I ministered to him. All right, now, he, at least as far as I know, he didn't get healed that moment. I don't know if anything happened after a few days. But the point I want to say is, it's your normal reaction. That you see any opportunity and you reach out. Last Wednesday, we had our pastor's meeting in this. We meet, you know, uh, uh, second Wednesday every month. We meet in this hotel, Chancery, it's nearby. Uh, it's a city pastor's meeting, so we're there. And during worship time, I saw one of the waiters. He was kind of standing there on the sideline and watching what this past, all these pastors are doing. I said, man, this guy, maybe he's got a little interest in, uh, in what we're doing, right? So I went to him, right? Started a conversation. Uh, you know, talking, and I had to speak, speak a little broken Hindi. Uh, hopefully he understood. <laughs> but trying to ask him, you know, do you know what we're doing? Do you believe in Jesus? 
things like that. Right? Can he speak English? You know, try to have a conversation. Try to point him to Jesus. Reach out to him. See, we can go out. We can just mind our own business and go away. But there's a soul that needs Jesus. And this is a room full of pastors and Christian leaders. Right? So you've got to look out. Hey, he may not come to APC. That's not the point. A soul that can be gathered into God's kingdom. Right? So I said, talk to him. And went and got a New Testament, gave it to him. I said, you read it and encourage him to, you know, just pray and seek God. And who knows, God could use that to impact his life. So the point I want to make is that you and I should just flow naturally in this. In trying to reach out to people, wherever they are, wherever you are. You may be sitting in the airport waiting for a flight and there's somebody who sits next to you and you're staring in the air. Okay? See if you can pick up a conversation. Talk to him. Right? Or you might go to the coffee shop. You may be with your friends. Or as part of your normal day, as you go about things, whenever you have an opportunity, reach out to share the gospel and minister to people in the power of the Spirit. That you and I can take the risk. You and I can step out. Whether the healing happens there or not, don't worry about it. But you step out. You take the risk. What if that person got healed? What if that person, something happened? Uh, you don't know the ripple effect. How many others would have been impacted through one miracle? So you and I take the risk. You and I just step out, pray, minister, and look out for those opportunities. So depending on your environment where you, that you operate in, you look out for strategies that you can reach people. But here are some simple things, personal strategies. You know, when you're working with people, you're interacting with people one-on-one, -on -one, here are some simple things you can do, you and I can do. For, especially for those who are, whom you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis, so if you're the same people that you're meeting in the office. Of course, you and I need to build trust, right? If you and I don't have trust they don't trust us they are not going to trust us when we share the gospel of jesus christ so your life first is important in those environments where people see you day in and day out build trust and engage in conversations and share the gospel intently uh, intentionally um, another thing you and i could think of doing is also give them something to read give them an apc publication they're free so keep a stack with you god is a good god don't lose hope. Um, love. We have a couple of gospel tracts available. Love that is deeper than love itself. Or what can wash away my sins. Uh, we also have uh, the Experience Change book that has the stories of several people. Now this is available at the book, book table. Or we'll just replenish it next week if it's run out today. But you just keep some of these with you. Carry them in your, if you carry a briefcase to work, take them. Or in your back, school bag, whatever. Take some with you. You never know when you get a chance to give something. Say, hey, just read it. We'll talk about it later. Just pass it on. Is that easy to do? But you need to be ready. The tools are available. It's all on the book table. But now it's got to get into your bag or wherever you have access to. So take a few with you. Keep it with you. Be ready. And when you get a chance, say, hey, would you like to read this? Uh, we'll talk about it later. The Experience Change booklet has stories of people from various walks of life, business people, others. Uh, and, 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 and then you can talk about the stories with them. Or you can have these prayer cards. We have these prayer cards, which basically, sorry, uh, promise cards, which basically have one verse on it, a verse on it. So you can just give it to them and say, let me, you know, does, does this make sense to you? Does it help you? And then it begins, it's a conversation starter. But you need to keep some of these resources with you so you can give to them. And you can, if you want to, you can also keep some New Testaments with you. We have free New Testaments available in the church office. Right? And that's what we give people in, these, in the first time in the New Believers back. There's a New Testament in it. So if you want to, you just call the church office. Can I have a few New Testaments? Or you can go buy some from you know, uh, the, one of the Christian bookstores. Keep some. But simple English. You don't buy old King James English. <laughs> Any, you know, New King James or, you know, NIV, something that is easy for people to understand, keep that with you. Because you'd never know, you know, like, like I said about the waiter in the, in, in the, in the restaurant on, on Wednesday. Because I had a New Testament, I could just give it to him. Read it. Keep it, keep it with you, ready. Please read it. God will speak to him through his word. Right? So be prepared with these simple things. Carry them with you, even if you're traveling. Carry them in your bag. You never know whom you will meet, who's going to sit next to you. You can just hand something, just tell them to read it. And, and, and then say, you know, if you get a chance, you can follow up with a call and talk to them uh, about it later on. So 
keep some of these resources with you. Or you may find other resources that, uh, that you find interesting, relevant to people that you work with. Uh, maybe it's the story or a biography of somebody uh, uh, related to your area of work, your field of work uh, that you could use. But keep some tools with you, some books or uh, prayer cards that you can just use as conversation starters. Uh, another thing that you and I can do as personal strategies is always offer to pray for somebody when they're in their time of need. So if a friend comes to you and says, you know, hey, I I'm going through this, this, this thing in my life, your response can be something like, hey, can I, is it okay if I pray for you? Would you do me a favor? Can I pray for you? You know, if it's, especially if it's a physical thing, that they can see the, uh, the, 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 the effects of you reaching out in prayer. Or if it's a situation in their life that they're going through, you just offer to pray. Can I pray with you? Pray with them. Let them see what God will do. Let them encounter the power of God, and that will open up their lives, their hearts to Jesus. But that's the third strategy, offering to pray, offering to minister to their need in prayer. Now, some, sometimes, you know, we think, well, they have to become a believer first, and then only prayers will work. But keep this in mind. Every person that Jesus ministered to before he died on the cross was unsaved. Yes? Every story, every miracle that you and I read about in the Gospels before he rose up from the grave was an unsaved person because nobody could be saved until he was resurrected. So every miracle he did for people who were unsaved. They just had faith in him as a person. Some of them didn't even have faith and still they experienced God's miracle. The Bible says that the Lord is good to all, not just churchgoers. Amen? So let's get rid of that wrong idea that only if they, you know, become good or only if they come to church, God will bless them. No, God is good to all. So you reach out, you pray and say, God, show your goodness to this person. or heal him or deliver him or meet his need and... You know, just pray, freely pray for people so that they can uh, experience it. So minister to them right where they are. Now, of course, if people are interested, another strategy you can have is to invite them to church, invite them to your life group, if they're interested. But don't make that the opening statement. You know, that comes a little later. The first thing is, let them impact them where they are. Then we could think about getting them to church if they are interested. All right, and of course, depend on the Holy Spirit. God may give you words of knowledge. You know, so you may find a person, God may speak to you, hey, just, you know, this person has this, this, this need. And so you can use that as a conversation starter, right? So get equipped in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Attend the weekend schools a couple of times. Get equipped in the gifts of the Spirit so that you can use the gifts as ways to impact people. The gifts of the Spirit are very powerful. Words of knowledge are very powerful. Uh, that impacts, that affects the hearts of people when you release those words. So get equipped, use those gifts to minister to people. We can also have group strategies where you know, we can get together as groups, you know, two or three of you get together and say, let's go out. Uh, let's target a, group, uh, uh, a certain group of people. Let's do some work among our college students. Let's do some work uh, as people in this office. What can we do? So two or three of you as believers begin to look for strategies on how to reach people together. Uh, work together. Uh, maybe you can Pray for people in the malls or you go out in the coffee shops or out on the streets. Uh, uh, two or three of you go, to, go out together and, and begin to reach out to people. Or you can host something in your home or in your workplace and invite people to it. Or you can even, you know, do other things like, you know, let's uh, screen a movie, a Christian movie, and get people to come and watch it and then use that as, as a way to start conversations. Are you with me so far? Right? Now, these are just ideas and there's plenty more ideas that God can give you how you can work together with other people to impact lives for Jesus Christ. Now, the next important thing is this. Be prepared to share. What must you be prepared? I want you to think about at least these three things. One, be prepared to share the gospel in five minutes. Okay, not 45 minutes. Five minutes. You should be able to, if you can do it in three minutes, great. Five minutes, upper limit. Be ready. How are you going to share the message of the gospel in three minutes? Can you do it? I know last Sunday, Pastor Brian kind of gave some of you a little bit of <laughs> encouragement to do that. But you need to be ready. Can you share the message of Jesus Christ? The message, the core message of the Bible in three minutes, maximum five minutes. 
be prepared. Now, if you haven't done this, this is a little promo, please download the APC Church app. <laughs> there is a menu item called Toolkit. You tap on that, and there is a button that says Gospel. You tap on that, and there you have aids to help you. You know, the Gospel outline. You can actually use that outline within less than five minutes. So just in case you forget what the Gospel is, if you have the app on your phone, you'll get it, okay? Right. You, there's a out, couple of outlines, how to share the gospel, right? Use that outline. But it's to help you share the gospel in five minutes or less. Second, be ready to talk about your own personal life transformation again in three to five minutes. In three to five minutes, you need to, be, you need to be tell somebody how Jesus changed your life. Now, don't tell them a long story. Before that, the flight may go. <laughs> If you're in the airport, the flight is gone, you tell, no. you should be quick, quick, three minutes, five minutes. This is what Jesus did for my life. Be prepared. Think about it. How are you going to communicate? How did Jesus impact your life in, in three simple minutes, three short minutes? What did Jesus do for you? Right? So be prepared with that. Now, don't make up a story. <laughs> Just tell your story. This is what he did for me. Now, now, some people have great amazing stories. Like, I was doing this, I was doing that, I was doing that, and, and, and you know, I was so messed up, and then he changed my life. Okay, but you may not have that kind of a thriller. <laughs> Yours may be just a normal, day-to-day, life-changing story. It's okay. All right? You may have a very simple story. That's okay. Just say what happened to you. How did meaning come into your life? Purpose come. Uh, what did God do? Now? Simple story. Just share that. Share your simple story. And other thing is this. Is be prepared to share relevant personal miracle stories. Again, in three minutes. Because let's say, suppose you have a friend. Or you meet somebody who's going through a financial situation. Then you can say, hey, you know, I was also going through a financial situation. At this time in my life. I look to God. And this is what he did. Okay? You don't have to give a long, elaborate story. Three minutes or less. I was going through this. And this is how God worked in my life. You have a couple of those stories. Things that actually happened. Or healing stories. Or other answer to prayer stories. That God did for you personally. Be prepared. So that when somebody tells you something, a problem they're going through, you use that testimony, it encourages their faith, and then you say, okay, can I pray for you? You're very likely to say yes. Because you're speaking from personal experience. I have experienced God. I want to help you experience God. Is that okay? But be prepared. You know, don't stumble if that, you know, oh, you know, so think some of these stories through. Keep them ready. Now, at the back of your mind, and let God use it. Let it just come out spontaneously as opportunities arise. Now, here's the, probably the most important thing you will ever learn in this message, and it is pray short prayers. Okay? Hey, if you are praying for a person who's never been to church, don't start from Genesis to Revelation. He won't know what you are praying you may be quoting the best verses. For him, it's all Latin. <laughs> He's not going to understand it. Pray simple prayers. Pray short prayers. When you're praying on your own, please pray long. That's okay. But when you're praying with somebody, especially somebody who's never been to church, especially somebody who doesn't know these things, keep your prayers short and simple. Something that they can understand. Lord Jesus, heal this person of whatever that condition is. And thank you, Lord. Simple. So they know you pray to Jesus and you pray that that particular condition in their life be healed. Their body be healed. Simple. Keep it short. Keep it simple. Don't say, God, you said I am the Lord that healeth thee. <laughs> he won't understand what you say. You, know, you can quote all these healing scriptures. He may, he may not connect with any of that. Right? So when you're praying with somebody... Pray simple, pray in ordinary English, 
and short. Is that okay? That's very important. Because otherwise, the whole impact of what you've done is lost because he doesn't know what you did. Right? So pray short prayers, keep it simple. You know, when Jesus ministered to people, he said simple things like, take your eyes up, take up your bed and walk. Stretch out your hands. Be healed. You know, receive your sight. Simple things that is how Jesus when he ministered to people. But he spent many hours in prayer with the Father. But when he was ministering to people, it was always simple, very short, direct, as how he ministered to people. And the last point here this morning before we close is this. Remember the battle is the Lord's. That means you and I can share and demonstrate the gospel with love and power. But the response of that person is not in our control. Leave that to God. Right? The battle belongs to the now, this is what Timothy, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy. This is his, you know, his last episode that he wrote, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I think these verses are very important. Verses 23 to 26. He says, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Now, words, don't get into arguments with people. Don't get into disputes with people. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. They're only generating strife. They're only breaking down relationships. And then he says, verse 24, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Don't get into quarreling with people. But be gentle. Teach, able to teach, patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. So even if people oppose you, in humility you speak what is right. So in humility, correcting those who oppose you. If God, perhaps, will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. So you and I are not the ones who are going to make them repent. It's God who is going to give them that grace. It's God who is going to bring them to that place of repentance. That they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So really, there's a spiritual battle involved. There's a devil that's taken them captive, and that liberation is a work of God, not the work of man. Amen? God is the one who's going to grant them repentance. It is God who's going to bring them out of that, what the devil's done. The devil's taken captive, taken them captive, and God is the one who's going to do that. So the real battle is a spiritual battle. You and I can do our part, but let God move and do the work. So depend on God. Invite God to do it. I close with this verse in John 6 and verse 44. Jesus said, no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. So no one can come to me unless the Father. So your, our prayer is God, draw him. Let him feel the pull of heaven. Let him feel the pull of God on his heart. Because that's something God and his heart. What you and I can do is share Jesus demonstrate the love of God, demonstrate the power of God. That's, you and I can do that. But the drawing, the pulling, is what God does on his heart, or that person's heart. No one can come to me unless the Father draw him. So you pray, Father, draw this person with your love. Draw this person with your power. You pull on his heart. Let him respond to you. Amen? So, simple strategies. You think about some ideas. Ways that you can share the gospel. Be prepared with a few things. Have a little bit of tools or resources with you that you can pass on, that you could use as conversation starters, that you and I will be able to do this. And just make it a normal, natural flow. You know, when, when I was in school, um, when I, this was in Bishop Cotton's, because I'm talking about some ancient days. <laughs> Every morning it was exciting to go to school, not because of the lessons, <laughs> but God, today, I'm going to find some new people to share the gospel with. There's that excitement. God, I'm going to find some new people I'm going to share the gospel with. And uh, God, what can I do? Right? Now, these days, it's different. We, you know, we may go out into Malaysia room or, you know, when we're traveling, whatever. But again, it's the same thing. God, is there somebody that I can reach for today? Is there somebody I can reach out to today? 
So I want you to have that excitement. When you get up tomorrow morning, many of you are going, are going to go into places where lots of people around you don't know Jesus. And it's a great, exciting place to be. Some people around me don't know Jesus. God, can you set some things up for me today where I can just touch somebody, influence somebody, impact somebody in some way and point them to Jesus Christ? You pray that prayer before you leave home. Pray a simple prayer like that. God, I'm going to go, you know, to this place. Can you set something up for me? Send me to somebody. Send somebody to me where I can share Jesus with them. Amen? Pray that kind of a prayer before you leave home. Now, the old American Express card slogan was, don't leave home without it. <laughs> okay. So I want to tell you, don't leave home without this little prayer. So God, set something up for me, God, today. I want to meet somebody. I want to run into somebody that I can share Jesus with. And then look out for those opportunities. Things that God sets up for you. Somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'm going through a problem. Somebody may call you for help. Or somebody may be just sitting by themselves. And you see them sitting by themselves. They look down, out. You go talk to them. You, know, you start the conversation. Give them a smile, whatever. Just start and engage and bring Jesus to their lives. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. We'll take a few moments to pray. I call our worship team up. I want to just pray for a few things before we close. The worship team will just get ready. I feel like praying for people who, uh, you know, there's some sort of internal bleeding. I don't know what this it could do with ulcers or, or something that's uh, internal. Uh, you have a bleeding or, or, again, I shouldn't say the word bleeding, but something happening internally as far as, you know, like an ulcer, uh, 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 internal injury, things like that. I just want to pray for that, for God to heal you. And, of course, for you to see uh, that healing take place. So we're going to pray for... Um, that first and then we'll just pray a gentle prayer for God to heal and I'm so excited about hearing the testimonies on Friday evening and I'll just share this was it Friday yeah Friday evening we had a prayer service so the couple is here in church so I'll make sure I don't look at them <laughs> but uh, this lady came and she shared how a week before she had a she noticed the cyst in her breast and she gone to the doctor. They did the mammogram. It's a large cyst, and uh, the doctor couldn't do, didn't want to start doing anything because of the f infection. So the doctor gave medicine for the infection, right? Not to take the cyst away, but to take the infection to deal with the infection. Now, uh, this lady, she was also, you know, listening to the daily devotions on the church app. So one more promotion for the church app. And that Thursday of last week, or the, was it, yeah, last week, Thursday, we talked about, we're doing a whole series on healing, and we talked about the healing presence. So she heard that devotion, she said, you know, there's healing in God's presence. So she knew Friday night, there is worship night happening at South. And this family doesn't, they're part of Central, they're not part of South, so they had to make the, as a family, they decided they're going to go to South for that worship night. And uh, they went there, and, and she said, you know, they were just worshiping. She went with that expectation because there's healing in God's presence, okay? Healing in God's presence. So went with that expectation. God, I'm going to worship. I'm going to be in your presence. I want to be healed, right? Went with that expectation. So they're worshiping. Now she forgot about it. But she went. And I think it was the next day when she checked, that big, large cyst had completely disappeared. Gone. She went back to the doctor, did another mammogram. The doctor is having these two reports, one before worship night, one after worship night. <laughs> I said, this is, this, can, this is not supposed to happen. <laughs> it's not supposed to happen. Okay, just one dot was there in this thing after. So it's not supposed to happen. 
I didn't give you medicine to remove the cyst, right? It's not supposed to happen. I said, you come back in three months. I want to check again. <laughs> but it was completely gone. Just in God's presence. Just in God's presence. And like nobody was praying. They just, but she went with expectation. She went with that. There is healing in God's presence. So she went purposely. They made a trip to South to be there. To worship God. And in that presence, God did the work. And she had the both reports before and after. Amen. God's alive. God's powerful. And so the same way this morning, if you have some problem, maybe the doctor gave you some report, something's happening internally. I want to just pray. I just want to pray a simple prayer, but you believe God. Now remember the woman with the issue of blood. 12 years, nothing happened. But one touch, everything healed instantly. And so I want you to expect that healing right now. But pray for that. Just pray for other conditions. And let God just do his work as we just take a few moments in God's presence. Father, we thank you for healing in your presence. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we are standing in your presence, <clears throat> I just pray for those. Okay, let's just lift up. If you need healing and you're identifying, you're just connecting with me for this prayer, lift your hand up, please, so we know who's being prayed for. Just say, they have, you need healing? Just say, okay, just put your hand up. Something internal in your body or some other need, just put your hand up. Father, I pray for these people. We need healing in their bodies. We've got their hands up. Right now, in Jesus' name, I command every disease, every ailment in their bodies to leave. I command healing in Jesus' name. To any ulcers, internal bleeding problems, I command healing to that. Also take authority over every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of pain, every work of the devil. I command you to go in Jesus' name. I command healing right now to your bodies. I command joints to be healed, bones to be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your work of healing. Thank you, God the wholeness and soundness of health in our bodies. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Also, if you're here this morning and you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, you know, you've heard us talk about the gospel and why it's important to tell other people about Jesus. But if you're here this morning, you've never made a personal decision to believe in Jesus Christ, to receive Jesus into your life. Before we close, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. And you feel in your heart, you know, I want to do that. I want to experience salvation in my life. I want to just pray this prayer with me. If you've never done this before, and those watching online, if there are family members in your home who are watching, who are listening, if you've never received Jesus into your life, I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now. Just pray this prayer with me, please. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. Make me a new person. And help me follow you. The rest of my life. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If there's anyone here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. And if you don't mind, you can just raise your hand. Anyone, you prayed this prayer with me. And this is the first time you prayed this prayer. I see one hand. Just raise it up. God bless. Two hands. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Anyone up in the balcony? God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Our greeters will come and give you a bag. I think it's a brown color bag. Uh, there are free resources in it. There's a card that you can just write your name and number, please, and give it back to them. It'll help us be uh, in touch with you. We'll call you. We'll tell you how to use those resources and how to just grow in your faith. And God bless you for doing this. Let's close. Thank you. 
Father, we just thank you for this morning, God, and thank you that you've called each one of us to be witnesses for Jesus. And I pray over each of our lives, Father, that there will be a fire ignited in our hearts, a holy passion to share Jesus with people, God. Lord, that we will be ready to go out and talk to people about Jesus. Ignite this in our hearts and God in our daily lives. Set things up for us. Let there be divine setups, divine opportunities that you put in our path to touch people for Jesus. And may each of us be alert to recognize those setups, to recognize those opportunities and unashamedly and lovingly bring Jesus to people. Use each of us, Father. And may your name be glorified through our lives. In Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.